What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today is another day in self-isolation. <laughs> um, it is a dreary day today in uh, self-isolation. It's going to rain for like the next like three or four days, which I suppose is better than the alternative uh, where last week it snowed for a couple days. So April in Canada. <laughs> By the time you're going to see this, it's much after April, uh, May sometime. I don't remember exactly uh, when I will be posting in May, but so everywhere should be done with snow. But I thought, you know what? I'm gonna film my Q&A finally. I've been forgetting about it, putting it off forever, and I'm gonna do it today. Right now, uh, I'm just wandering around the house as little Parker Bean here is chirping at some birds outside because she's so cute <laughs> so i do have specific questions but i did get a lot of very general questions uh that i'm going to answer super duper quick before i get into any specifics so the most common one i got is how long have i been in fountain pens uh which i believe uh my first fountain pen purchase was actually 2014 uh, towards the very, very end, but I didn't really get heavily into it, like falling in love with it until 2015. So depends on like kind of what you want to gauge that as. So 2014, so six years, um, but 2015 is when I like dove completely in. Um, and then I believe 2016 is when I started this channel. Uh, I'm not 100% certain on that, but I'm pretty sure that I am. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been in it for a while. Uh, next question I got a lot uh, was people wanted to know how old I was, which I'm not sure why, but um, I'm 31. <laughs> uh, my birthday is January 15th, 2000, no, 1989. I was going to say <laughs> 2020. Oh, 1989. So uh, I just made the 80s cutoff <laughs> by getting one full year in before uh, before the 90s began. So 31. Um, another common question that I got, of course, is why did I start the channel? Um, that I've answered many, many, many times uh, in other Q and A's. Um, but I know that I have a lot of videos on here now, so. For people who have just joined, um, especially since quarantine started, we've seen like, you know, 300 plus people uh, join the family. So what's up? Hi guys, I hope you're still here by the time uh, quarantine ends. Um, <laughs> uh, but I have, uh, I started um, the channel because a couple things. One, there was not very many ladies that you could see talking about fountain pens. Um, and it always kind of bugged me because I wanted to know like what a female perspective is uh, on fountain pens um, and get, you know, just that kind of viewpoint. Um, and there were even less uh, Canadians doing fountain pen reviews. And it's very difficult to get fountain pen knowledge in Canada uh, because it's not prevalent here. Um, and I know what you guys are gonna be saying. You're like, well, it's not really that prevalent in the States either. But as much as you think it's not prevalent in the States, way worse in Canada. <laughs> like I would say there's probably like double the amount of interest in the States that there is in Canada. Not to say it's not here. Like once you find your people, you found your people and you're in. Um, but certainly not super popular. So broad answer on that. <laughs> But that's basically why, um, is because I wanted Canadian perspective and female perspective. Um, so a specific question that I got was, if you could only choose one, only one, between the Lamy 2000, Pilot Custom Heritage 823, and the Pelican M805, I'm going to parentheses that and say Streisman because that's the one that I have and I love, which one would you pick and why? And oh my goodness, that is a very difficult question because those three pens easily would be in my top five. Easily. 
and I mention them all of the time. I mention how much I love them all the time. I recommend them all the time because all three of them are amazing, amazing, amazing pens. I would say between the three, if I'm forced to choose, like I'm talking like gun to my head, I'm about to get sent to like the desert island, the infamous one, which one would I choose? I would probably, <sighs> I don't want to say, I'd, I'd probably pick the custom A23 with, yeah, commit. I'm going to commit. Pilot Custom Heritage A23. Reason being, larger ink capacity, so you don't have to worry about filling, uh, you know, as often, even though the Lamy 2000 and the A25, uh, 805 are both um, piston fillers, so they do hold more ink than, you know, something like a, a cartridge converter would. Um, the A23 is a vacuum fill, and if you do the like little trick where you can fill up the entire body, um, then you get, I think it's just over two milliliters of ink, which lasts a long time. So definitely that one. Um, I also love the way that it writes. Um, and I pretty much exclusively now pair that pen with the um, Montblanc James Purdy and Sons uh, single malt ink, which is super expensive, but it's my favorite ink. I am obsessed with it. Um, so if I only had that pen, then it probably means that it's full with that ink, which would make me very, very happy. Now, I will say, I almost said the Lamy 2000 because you can now buy the nibs individually. Um, so you could kind of cheat <laughs> by being able to swap out the nibs and get different nib sizes. But I didn't say that because one, the nibs on their own is basically almost the price of the pen itself. Um, so it's kind of dumb to buy just the nibs. But it's still an option. <laughs> um, but it also is kind of cheating, I think. I think the the uh, integrity of the question re relies on just one. That's it. So that's why I chose the 823. I'm pretty sure that is edging out to be my favorite pen of the moment. Um, the Optima and whatnot still, they're, they're constantly fighting. But for right now, I'm reaching towards the A23 pretty consistently. Um, and I think it's because I always have it inked up with that uh, James Purdy & Sons uh, single malt, which is just a fantastic ink. If you have the means to pick it up, oh my gosh, please do. It is so beautiful. I love it. I love it so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, so A23. Let me know though what you guys would pick because I feel like this would be a heated conversation. <laughs> so let me know down in the comment section below. Out of those three, just picking one, which one would you do? Um, another question that I got, or another specific question was talking about um, nib sizes and wishing that there was a standard size. So we know that typically Western nibs are, you know, broader than um, Japanese nibs. But once you get into like, the mediums are sort of like wishy-washy because their extra fines and fines definitely are almost a full nib size down from what a Western fine would be considered as, especially if you're into like Pelican. Pelican nibs are even broader than a normal Western. So if you get a Pelican fine, then basically you're getting a Western medium, even though it's a Western fine if that makes any sense. <laughs> um, same thing sort of with Visconti, although Visconti is kind of wishy-washy also because their quality control is not the greatest. Um, whereas like Platinums uh, and like Sailor for the Japanese brands and like Parker, Pelican, um, like Pilot, well, Pilot's Japanese, but again, kind of sits on that. Mm. So <laughs> basically if you get in general, a Japanese fine or extra fine, then it's going to be almost a full step down from what a Western fine or extra fine would be considered. But it's wishy-washy when you get into the med mediums because some pens that are Japanese mediums still write about a step down than what a 
Western medium would be. So a Japanese medium would be like a Western fine. But it's that starts to where it's like a little bit wishy-washy because I say that because if you use a pilot medium, it's closer to a Western fine. So like a Yovo fine kind of thing. If you use a sailor medium, not medium fine, they trick you with that one, just the medium, use a sailor medium, or honestly even like a pilot medium for the, for the most part, then it's pretty darn close to a Western medium. It might be ever so slightly narrower, but pretty freaking close. If you check out the video that I just posted um, of the Sailor 1911 with a medium nib, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> um, and then if you get into broads, they're all the same. Come at me if you want to. They're all the same. Every single Japanese broad that I've used, which at this point has been across multiple brands, have all been the same to Western broads. With the exception, with the exception of probably uh, like the higher end Western. So like a, a, an M pilot, a Pelican M1000 broad is crazy. And a couple of the Visconti broads that I've used are crazy too. But that's just because they're so wet that like they just <laughs> gush on out. But like if you use a platinum broad, for example, it's going to be the same as if you had, you know, a Pelican M200 broad or whatever. Like they're pretty much the same once you get out of the extra fine and fines. So I understand the confusion. <laughs> I understand the confusion because like I said, Pelican is almost in a breed of their own, a class of their own with nib sizes and like their, their widths. So, because this, this question came from the Pelican M805 Streisman uh, Second Thoughts, I believe, um, where I was saying like, it's a fine nib, but it writes like a medium. And that's why it's so hard because each pen brand basically has their own sizes. So what the question was is like, do you think there could ever be a standard? And I, I don't think there could be. I really don't because some if nobody made their own nibs um, and it was all made at like one factory by like, you know, a couple people, machines, whatever, then sure, there could be. Like if all we ever had for the rest of our lives were Yovo nibs, then sure, there could be. But that won't ever happen. Aurora makes their own nibs. Um, Pelican, I don't think they make their own nibs, but if they They've got to do something because if they have to do something with their nibs. Like, I think they might make their own um, because, pff, like I said, they're in a class of their own. Um, Pilot um, makes theirs for, like, the Namiki one, the, the regular Pilots, all this kind of stuff. Um, so because there's so many that make their own nibs, you, you can't. You can't expect there to be a standard because everyone's gonna tune them a little bit differently. And you're gonna get slight variations across the, even like the same brand. So if you go to um, like buy a, a Pilot Metropolitan or well any pen really, for the most part, you're gonna get a consistent um, experience because you're going to have a guideline from Pilot saying, this is what a fine is, this is what a medium is, this is what a broad is, but all, nibs um, eventually get tested by a human with the exception of probably like the the Chinese ones that just like go on like a Jin Hao or something like that. Um, so when they're tested by humans, ultimately they're going to make the final tweak, which means that it's slightly handmade, which means that there's going to be slight variations. So I've used, you know, fine nibs from Pilot and they've been a little bit different each one. Um, and that can be frustrating, but it can also be amazing in the sense that you could get a nib that is perfect, perfect. And then you get the same pen that's slightly drier or something. So it's, it's hard to say like, would I want there to be a standard? Would I not want there to be a standard? 
I don't know because that's why it's part of the reason why you buy from that company. If you like the way Pilot's nibs write, that's why you buy a Pilot. If you like the way that Platinum nibs write, that's why you buy a Platinum. Aurora, Sailor, Pelican, Visconti, Mont Blanc. The list is endless. It keeps on going and going and going and going. <laughs> you know, and if, if everyone had a standard nib, then you would get more of the standard writing style, which I, again, I can understand being semi, like, it would be easier. It would be easier, but I don't think it would be better. Uh, I think it would actually be worse, to be honest, because like I said, then you wouldn't have a brand that you would like or a nib style that you would like. If you don't like the way that all of a sudden the standard is standard, then you're screwed. <laughs> you have nowhere else to go um, other than a nibmeister, and then you're going to spend, you know, through the roof to get one made. So, man, this is a long-winded answer <laughs> because it's complicated. So do I think there could ever be a standard? No. Do I think there should ever be a standard? No. I would like to maybe see, ha like, have a standard, like, across the board for entry-level pens. That might be okay. But for the most part, I kind of like the fact that each manufacturer is a little bit different because that's part of what makes them special. So that's just my opinion. This video has gotten very long already. <laughs> um, the final question that I will answer is a bit more of a broad answer as well. Um, and that is, do you plan on stopping videos? And I think that people are scared for whatever reason with this whole pandemic thing that like people are gonna stop making videos because YouTube is taking a lot of the money away, which to be honest, I'm gonna be real with you. I don't make anything off of this channel. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, a few pennies here and there basically, but that's it. Like YouTube pays me nothing. <laughs> um, yes, I do have ads that run on it and it does give me like a little bit, but it's not even enough to sustain the channel. Like it's not enough to invest back into it because it's just not enough. Like pens are more expensive. Even if you just get like entry level pens, I'd be able to make like a couple videos and that's about it. So, um, so no, I'm not doing it for the money, which means I'm not scared about the fact that YouTube is not going to pay me anything. Um, because that's not why I'm doing it. And if that was all the reason why I was doing it, then I would have stopped four years ago. <laughs> so I'm going to continue to make videos. I'm going to do another Q and A that hopefully isn't 20 minutes long. Um, where I only answer like five, <laughs> five questions. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm going to continue to make videos. I am going to look into potentially doing something like a Patreon where I may do uh, weekly Q and A's with you guys or something. Um, let me know in the comment section down below. For those of you who have made it 20 minutes into this video, you are the kinds of people that I want to start a Patreon for. Um, because everyone else who is just here for like a quick quick thing would have left uh, 18 minutes ago. So <laughs> let me know what kind of like bonus content that you guys would wanna see. Um, if I were to start a Patreon, I would like to start one um, only so that I can sustain uh, essentially buying things so that I can review things for you guys. Um, I'm getting to the point now where I don't really have much left to review um, because, well, I don't have any more money to buy pens. And well, I'm not being sent very many because, well, Corona. So <laughs> um, I don't wanna have to rely on people sending me things uh, in order to do that. So it's something I've been mulling over for a while, but let me know, like I said, if you've made it this long, you are the kinds of people that I would wanna see. Um, so let me know and I'll think about it and I'll set it up and I'll let you guys know in the future what happens with that. Um, but for now, guys, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, um, if you are still here, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for supporting me and my channel. Stay home if you can stay safe. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this will be May. So everyone might be back to work by then. Um, but guys, thanks for watching.